welcome into the Monday Morning Quarterback UK with your boys Ben, Bids, and Dammy. What's been going on, guys? How's the week been? Do you know what? It was a good uh, bank holiday weekend. Mm. Uh, went to a festival on a Saturday in Brighton, and the weather was actually good. Uh, it was drum and bass, so it was a bit too up tempo for okay. my liking. But but uh, I, I I enjoyed I enjoyed the I enjoyed the vibe, but yeah, the music was a bit too bumping for me. <laughs> a bit too um, up tempo. <laughs> But then, um, yeah, today uh, went to the went to the gym with the family for like the first time, which was actually quite okay. nice. Um, yeah, like getting getting um, my mom and my sister into exercising, which has been a struggle to do. So yeah, actually yeah. getting that, <laughs> so actually getting that to happen today, and them actually enjoying it, which which was okay, good. Okay, fair so, enough. Were you, yeah. were you coaching them? Yeah, no. So do you know what? Ailish kind of took the reins on that one. Like she mm. was. She was a lot easier with them, like, first of all, like, the stretching part and then, like, doing the treadmill, like, how to actually use the different machines. Because, like, I know, like, Bids, you've been going to the gym for time, but, like, for other people who haven't been going, so it's a scary place and they don't, I mean, is, a lot of time they don't actually understand how it works, so. Yeah, yeah there's a lot uh, of anxiety and, as well. There's a lot, people yeah. think there's a lot of eyes on you, but there isn't. Everyone's yeah. there. There isn't. There, yeah. So, like, Ailish, Ailish, like, was really good in helping them out. So, yeah, that was my bank holiday. What about you, Bids? Um, mine was pretty good. Um, it was El sister's um baby shower, so we're up oh, at their lovely. place in Derby. Um, like games and and stuff. None of the gender reveal stuff because uh, <laughs> no, no one was feeling that. They they already no, know what the, what the gender is. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, it was a good day, like you said. Um, uh, weather held up. It was like it was a lot hotter than everyone expected. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah, good times. And then today, gym as well. But we're packing because we're moving yeah. because our, our annual tradition of moving um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we're moving in a couple of weeks um but luckily it's only down the road so it's going to be an easy one this time but yeah just been packing most of the day what about you Ben? nice i chilled it's been a lot going on the last few weeks um like we're doing like more wedding wedding prep stuff so nothing too crazy though mm-hmm. went for lunch today that was it it was a good time Super relaxed. Okay, Where'd you go? Man. Where'd you go? And did you get chicken and chips? I did get some. <laughs> I, did, I did get some sweet chili chicken uh, to start. I was really good. <laughs> of it course was, you did. It was. It was. It was excellent. Did. It was excellent. I was just a pub. Um, pub not far. Uh, not far from me. It's like ten, fifteen minutes. It's quite a nice pub. So go there every now and then. Yeah, man, it was yeah. good. Pretty chilled. Pretty chilled. All right, cool. Should we get into it? Mm-hmm. Yep. So this week we are doing um, episode 40, by the way, just saying, like nice little milestone, nothing crazy, but yeah. episode 40. Yeah, um, so, yeah man, 40th episode. Um, I don't have a banner or anything. Maybe we'll drop a banner next time. <laughs> just a little, just, <laughs> no, no, you're not feeling the banner. All right. No, no uh, not. I mean, I do the editing, but I'm not editing that. Just either. drop a little banner, <laughs> just, just a 50. Jeez. Uh, no. Um, so we just had the draft. You, we've done two pre-draft episodes prepping our kind of top 10 first rounds, what we think is going to happen, which was what we did a couple of weeks ago. We said the draft happened last um, last week, so we know what's going on with the draft. We just want to do a little bit of a review. How did we get on? Um, Bids is going to be the GM. That's all I'm saying. Bids is next in line for a GM <laughs> position because um, apparently he knows what's going to happen. Oh, team would tank. Yeah, apparently, apparently he knows what's going to happen. Um, but also I think that, that I was right and the GM's wrong so that's that's all i'm saying um but we'll get into it anything else or we just go through go through our drafts yeah yeah. we'll go through the top top 10 um and then we'll talk about uh just some of the other interesting decisions and um yeah key facts of the of the draft as well Mm, yeah man we're gonna get into um we're gonna get into our uh predictions as well for the season because there are quite a lot of changes uh, some teams are looking looking interesting uh, on the back of the draft, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, we'll start with the first pick. I think we we didn't we don't need to spend much time on this, but it was Caleb Williams, which we all said was going to happen. Um, I don't think anyone was overly surprised at that point. Once you know, once everything had kind of gone down with Justin Fields, it was a fairly standard pick. It was the right decision, and yeah, fairly straightforward. Nothing else to say really. Mm-hmm. Two yep. two and three was where it got a little bit juicier for us um, because. Yeah. We spoke about it a little bit about how um, 
you know, maybe Washington or New England would, would switch, as in we weren't sure who each of them would go for. Um, I did kind of say when I was chatting through mine that I did, I did think Jane Daniels would probably end up going to Washington, but I wasn't really sure. But I left it as it was Drake made to Washington, Jane Daniels to New England. Obviously, it happened the other way around. Um, because of course it did. So Jane Daniels ended up going to Washington, and Drake May went to New England. Did we all say that? Uh, no, I, I went. I went Jaden Daniels. You had Jaden Daniels second. Drake May third. Yeah. So you were right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but again, I, I, I was. I think I'm pretty sure in my my initial, um, my initial prediction, I had Drake May second. But yeah. I don't know. Just from um, the sort of uh, the media, the news I was seeing. It seemed like it was going Jaden Daniels' way. Yeah. Um, as you said, you fought some as well, but you just wanted to switch it up a little bit. Yeah, I did think Jaden Daniels would probably end up going to going to Washington. Um, but yeah, I mean, my my main reason for that was because I didn't think New England. Um, well, I thought Washington just wanted somebody that they thought would be good, and I think they didn't mind that. Yeah. I think they didn't. Sorry, that's obvious. But I didn't think they minded that Jaden Daniels was more of a runner. Whereas I think New England probably minded more that Jane Daniels was a runner and I thought probably happy with Drake May, I think, in the long run. But Jane Daniels looks like he could be really good. I think there's still uncertainty around Drake May, but there's there's uncertainty around any quarterback that comes in, right? Mm. So Yeah, yeah you yeah, and you were worried about you're worried that um that they get RG three again. Yeah. The main reason why yeah, you you were, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, well, I just, in general, running quarterbacks are a risk. Um, even big ones, for example, um, uh, Anthony Richardson last year, he's six five, he's massive. You know, who else? Um who's the oh completely spaced on his name. Carolina quarterback. Twenty fifteen was the first, was was like MVP. Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. Sorry. Cam Newton. I, I blanked on Cam Newton, but Cam Newton's absolutely massive as well. So and even then their careers generally don't don't last if you're a running quarterback, even if you're big. And Jane Daniels is not big. So he's gonna have to develop yeah. into more of a pocket passer. And I don't know if Washington have got the ability to develop him into a proper passing quarterback so it'd be interesting to see how that plays out you know they try i don't know they clearly didn't like sam howell they they wanted to go fresh um they really weren't that into sam howell clearly but i don't know we'll see how it plays out but I, I don't i don't think this is a great pick for washington in the end i think it's roughly how we thought it was going to go but i don't i don't foresee this being a long i don't think jane Jones is going to have a really long career in the league i think he's going to end up getting hurt year one because he's more of a runner he'll try and make space for himself the offensive line isn't great how many times did sam howell get sacked last year there <laughs> power bomb to, power bomb to the center of the earth he got absolutely <laughs> rinsed and yeah jane Jones is quicker i'll be able you to get ready but i don't see it you don't think he'll sort of see what happened to Anthony Richardson and think I need to switch it up early. No, not no. after two, three games when it's too late. Do, do any of them? No. <sighs> he how wants to years, win. How many years has the NFL been running for? How many years have they been watching NFL football? Yeah. Surely they. Yeah, but known. how many years of of running of, of quarterbacks like um, like dual quarterbacks been a thing or been this popular? Um, wow, uh, like a while, wow. well, I guess. I, Michael yeah. Vick. Yeah, I guess like the first one. Yeah, Michael Vick at Atlanta. Mm-hmm. As you know, was it Atlanta or, or was it at the other Philly? Uh, but yeah, Michael Vick was. Yeah, Michael Vick was at Philly for years. I but he got injured. One, but he got so, injured. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he actually, he actually was one of the less injured ones. Still got injured bunch. Like Cam Newton's career tanked. Cam Newton was was without question the best player in the league in 2015. Where was he by 2018? Nowhere. Mm. Like, Surely he could still be playing if he wasn't so busted. Probably. I mean, he's, but, but he's, doing he's, what? He's young enough, technically. But doing what? He never, what? he never developed to be that player. Like, he needed to run. Mm. Like, if he doesn't have the legs, what's he going to do? He's not, can't, he's not good enough to be a pocket passer, pure pocket yeah. passer. That's why no one wanted him. That's why New England were like, yeah? And then realised how terrible that decision was. So I don't I don't foresee I, I like Jaden Daniels. I think I think he's I think he's clearly very athletic and talented, but I just running quarterbacks always get injured. And it's just he will want to win, he'll want to put his body on the line to win. Like Anthony Richardson looked great. He got like three games. Like yeah. it's what it is. And they have a better offensive line than um, Washington. Uh, the Colts did. So we'll see. Drake May is an interesting Fair. one for New England because they do want to be a passing team. 
Um, whereas I think Washington will just do whatever. Um, whereas New England, I think, do want to be more of a pocket passing team. So we'll see how that plays out with Drake May. Like he'll still try and escape the pocket, but he will he will try and be more of a pocket passer. And I think he's potentially got the talent mm. to do it. But New England's tutelage, I'm not so sure. Just gonna say, who's his? Who are his weapons? Yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So my question is, do you think? Do, so, do they 100% start him this year? Who are they going to play instead? Uh, well, Jacoby Brissett is not a bad backup. But why they, would you they play? Can play him, they can play him the first. But why well, at that because point? Because realistically, yeah. But do you want do you want another? Well, do you want another Matt Jones situation where the team's not ready, and then he gets. And then he gets made to look really bad in his first year. I mean, oh. a lot of the time, first year quarterbacks do look bad. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do you actually like let him learn under someone who's been doing it for I don't know ten, fifteen years? Oh, you learn how to be a professional. Yeah, you are preaching to the choir here. You could not. I could not be more on board with let let the let the quarterback sit for at least a year. Two is ideal, maybe a year and a half. Uh, but I don't think they will. I think they'll play him. If they don't play him week one, and Jacoby, if Jacoby Brissett doesn't light it up in week one, if they lose week one, Drake May's playing week two. Unless Jacoby Brissett plays really well and they just get beaten by like one, two, three points and it looks really close and they're like, oh, okay, Jacoby Brissett could maybe play again. Mm-hmm. Like If Jacoby Brissett loses and it doesn't look good week one, Drake May will play. They'll be, they'll be calling for him to play as soon as that happens. This is We'll get into this a little bit later because there are a few quarterbacks drafted in the first in the first 10 and quite a lot drafted in the first round. Um, but if your team does not succeed with your current quarterback, their team calls for your backup, like, quickly. Because you're like, you draft this guy in the first round, so he must be ready yeah. to play. Uh, I don't know. Jaden Daniels isn't yeah, young yeah. either as well, by the way. We haven't really spoken about that. Jaden Daniels is not young. How old is he? 24, I think. 23, 24? Yeah. Yeah, that's quite old. Yeah. yeah. He's 23. Um, interestingly, Drake May is down as... On the on their depth chart, uh, Drake May is down as a second yeah. choice. Yeah, but he, he's... That, he's that, does it matter at this stage, he's, or is that... No. He's, he's not... At this stage of the season. I don't think he's even have a practice yet, has he? I don't think they've even had any... any um, OTAs no. or anything yet. They've done nothing yet. So. I'm just looking at the, ES, no. the ESPN no. depth chart. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, no, but they've also not, got. I, I don't. I don't think it matters technically. Yeah, but look at wide receiver three, Jalen Polk. Who's yeah. Jalen Polk? <laughs> Demario <laughs> Douglas, Kendrick Bourne, and Jalen Polk. That's rough. But the That's... thing is, they're, they're, surely they're going to expect to suck this season. So, but they got KJ Osborne. Osborne, the easiest. <sighs> he was good. He was good for the Vikings last year. He was all right for the Vikings. They got Juju, your boy Juju. He was around. Juju sucks. He's my boy Juju. Juju sucks. They got Demario <laughs> Douglas. They got they got Demario Douglas, and then they've got Kendrick Bourne, who's perpetually injured. So it's not it's not great. Yeah, it, it's going to be a rough I year mean, in New England. That one is questionable right now. Bro, just oh, can't stay wow. healthy, man. Who have they got a tight end? Um, Hunter Henry, Henry, right? And Austin Hooper. Hunter they've Henry's actually they've got yeah. Austin Hooper as well. They've they've actually got a fairly strong tight end group. In fairness. Yeah, Hunter and he's good. Mm. All right, cool. So we're happy yeah. with the first three. We were we were all pretty bang on with the first three. I'm counting those as wins either way. Um, yeah. Cool. So then move on to four. <laughs> do what you need to do. I'll say whatever I need to say. This is this is just this, we are where we are. Um, this is then pick number four, where I think did we all have Marvin Harrison Jr. going mm. for? Yeah, I yeah? believe so. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, cool. So Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. goes forward to Again, Arizona. It was just, it was the- yeah, it was obvious. Obvious choice. The first non quarterback yeah. was always going to be um, mm. Harrison Jr. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, he looks. He, you know, people have likened him to. Um, who have they likened him to? Oh, I'm blanking on. I'm blanking on um, wide receivers. But who's like one of the best wide receivers? Randy Moss. People have likened him to like Randy Moss and stuff. Larry Fitzgerald. Larry, no man, he ain't no Larry. Um, but if people are likening him to um, <laughs> to, to like Randy Moss, no, because he's he's Randy Moss. Um, he's more of a Randy Moss in terms of the way he plays. I think people are liking him to his style of play mm-hmm. um, more than anything. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. it felt like an obvious an obvious one at that point. Like he's too good not to take early. 
Like, if you don't take him and he's unbelievable, yeah, that there, is, was, there, was, there was a lot in the... There was a lot of talk in the combine of him just sort of skipping the combine, skipping his pro, uh, pro day as well, but it, yeah. it, it didn't affect his stock at all. No, no, no uh, he was no, too good. He was too good. When you're that talented, yeah. it won't affect it won't affect your... No, nah, exactly. Exactly. And they really need a wide receiver. They haven't really got much going on at wide receiver. Like Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch, it's not great. Zach Pascal, they signed from um, Indianapolis. It's mm. not, again, it's not, it's not, they're not, they're not world beaters. He'll immediately be their number one receiver. Um, they've got Trey McBride as well, who's been a bit of a threat mm. at tight end, but outside of that. And Kyler Murray needs weapons because mm. he can't just run constantly. Yeah. Um, so, no, that one totally and, makes and sense. And it feels like they. It feels like they kind of just left Hollywood Brown to go because they knew they were getting, they they knew they were getting their wide receiver at four, so they kind yeah. of knew that from quite early on. Yeah, I don't think they were. Yeah, I don't think they were too fussed about Hollywood Brown leaving. I think, you know, he's not been, he's not yeah. really been that guy. This is just classic Kansas City, though. Kansas City picking up players who yes. people knew were talented and knew were had the potential to be good, and they were like, "Well, we'll take them, mm-hmm. make them good again, and then they'll move on again." back contract somewhere else it's good for us it's good for them like they won't stay with us forever because we're not going to pay yeah. them the fat contract because they're definitely not worth that um so you move them on have them with juju as well yeah have them mccall hardman mm. and then they brought mccall hardman MVS. Right? mvs yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah. all right cool MVS is going to get paid i'm sure yeah he will wait hold on just on just on marvin harrison there's more there's more talk on um uh, him not signing his NFL PA licensing deal. Do you know much about that, Ben? Oh, I've seen a little bit about that. Like he's not interested in being in um, in like the um, NFL games, right? In Madden. No, I don't. He, they're not even allowed to sell his jerseys. NFL aren't even allowed oh, to sell his jerseys yet. Yeah. He hasn't signed the pro licensing. Oh, it's like everything, isn't There's it? A, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a strange one. They, they, um, what's, what's that kicker's name? The um, uh, I've forgotten his name. What what is the what is his logic behind not signing it? Is there a reason? I, I, I'm not sure, but Pat, Pat, Pat McAfee um, on on his mm. show, he's got a mm. he's got a really detailed piece on on the reason why. It's something to do with his college, um, the the deal that he took or didn't take in um, college, and it's impacting it now. There's there's negotiations in his his team. With uh, oh. with the college, college licensing and with the NFL is mad, but this guy has got <laughs> so much before he's even played um, in the league. Um, that's that's going to be really weird if if he gets to the first game of the season and and none of the fans can wear his jersey. That's just going to be yeah. the strangest thing. Ever. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, he's apparently from just a couple yeah. things I've just quickly read. He's using it as leverage to get a bigger deal from uh, companies like Fanatics. Which, because okay. uh, okay. everyone's going to buy his jersey in Arizona. <laughs> everyone's going to buy yeah. his jersey in Arizona. So, yeah, fair enough. That's his. That's his business, mm-hmm. right? Like, if if he doesn't think he's getting enough from the deal, then hold out until they like they need to sell his jersey. Like, they can't not sell his jersey. I imagine he's just after a higher percentage of the cut. Mm-hmm. Probably more than anybody else, or something that's wild. Makes sense. Fair enough. That's his that business. Makes sense. All right, cool. Number five. So I had, this is where it gets a little bit off the rails because I still think the pick was right. I still think the pick was right, but I thought that we all thought actually that um, the Vikings were going to trade into five with the Chargers to take JJ McCarthy, which um, we'll get into later. They, They did do, but they didn't do it at five and instead the Chargers took Joe Alt, which was also confusing because we thought that that was going to go, uh, that Joe Alt was going to go to the Titans at seven. Um, the Titans. Yeah, mm. that was a lock. Yeah, we really, I really thought that was going to happen. But that was mostly because either the Chargers were going to take Malik Neighbors because they really need wide receivers or they were going to trade out of five rather than anything else. I think they, they, they need an offensive tackle yeah. like we knew we knew they wanted an offensive tackle um they definitely need one but they've got a lot of needs as a team they just realized i figured they would need someone for justin Herbert to throw the ball to but they're clearly not fussed about that right now well at first in the first round anyway yeah, the thing is the, the ot the ot club the tackle class was the tackle class is quite deep so i think yeah. everyone expected them to pick up a wide receiver at five, if they were picking up five pick up a wide receiver at five and yeah. then pick up a 
um, a, a, a tackle at what thirty three or whatever, yeah. we, whatever yeah. our second pick was. But um, yeah, it threw a lot of people. Then you see Joel's big self struggle to get off the <laughs> off the chair. This guy is so big. Yeah, he's but that's big, what you want from big. your. That's what you want from your offensive tackle. Yeah, he's no, a big guy, man. That's yeah, what I want. He's, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. So yeah. let's hope it works out. Because I mean, we I mean we got our wide receiver in the end at thirty three, Lad McConkey. <laughs> I can't believe the teams let him go at thirty three. <laughs> I'm so surprised yeah. by that. Yeah, well, you didn't think he'd, he'd drop into the second round? Nah, I thought some a team would take him in the first round. I thought he was one of the better one of the better receivers in the class. And mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, it's still quite high. This, like, if you look at actually how many receivers were taken before him, but yeah, I thought a team would take him in the first round. I didn't think he was I good think, enough. I think um, Ricky Pearce or going before him was the weird one. Hmm. But there was there was a run of there was run of four um, wide receivers in a row, uh, which was Ricky Pearsall, thirty one, then Xavier Leggett, Keon Coleman, and then Lab McConkey. Mm. So a lot of teams passed up on him. Mm. Yes. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but yeah, a little little bit surprising, yeah. but not not unsurprising. Like the Joe Walton's a really good offensive tackle, but I just figured they would use their draft capital more mm. more effectively than that, you know. All I'm saying is that Joe Ortiz should lose his job and I should take it because I'd have done more, more with the pick. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'd have traded out. I'd have taken right. offensive tackle further down. So, I'm open to the job. All right. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, GM bids wants the job, does he? All right. Sorry, big right. time. I played a, I played a, a one season of Madden. <laughs> uh, stopped before the draft because the game broke. <laughs> yeah, the game yeah, broke. Pick me up. I bought. I got Madden. Madden NFL. Yeah, it did. I got a Madden twenty three, and then after I got into the playoffs, it just benches all your starters. Sure, it does. And there's no way of fixing if it. If there's if there's one way if there's <laughs> hey, one I way if there's one way to describe you, Biz, you bring break controller energy to just about every conversation. So I feel like maybe the game didn't break. Maybe you broke the controller. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Controller in about 15 years, man. Allow. Yeah, but I bet you put it through years. a TV screen or something stupid. <laughs> no yeah, it's a lot more recent. A lot more recent, <laughs> isn't it? I'm a calm-ish player now. I, was like, I don't calm-ish. play games that piss me off anymore. <laughs> Except for that first season of Madden. Football manager. <laughs> I don't worry yeah. about it. It pissed me off. I was just confused. I was like, I can't bother with this. <laughs> And then launched a controller right, out of the window. So who was taken? <laughs> Shut up, man. Who, who was taken uh, at number, number six? six ben? Number six, Malik Neighbors. Um, I have Malik Neighbors at six. Biz, did mm. you have Malik Neighbors at six? Uh, I did. I did. Yeah. I, that's because I had. Um, yeah, because I had McCarthy at five. Yeah, um, and you you had Malik Neighbors at six, didn't you, Dummy? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was like, the Giants have to take an offensive weapon. Realistically, yeah. they're not going to go for a, a, another QB, so they, they've they got to take a wide receiver. And Malik Neighbors was probably the second best, maybe. Yep. Maybe the third best. I, I don't really know the difference between him and Roma Dunze, but def, they were definitely a tier below Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I think Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze, I think Malik Neighbors has just got the stats. I think... Th- that he's also played against some slightly mm. tougher opposition. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent on that though. But I think he was his. I think he. If you looked at his like um, stats on the combine, I think his rating was very slightly higher. I think there's just there's. I don't think there's a huge amount of difference mm-hmm. in terms of ability there. I just think Roma Dunze has lucked out in being considered slightly worse than Malik Neighbors because mm-hmm. that spot in Chicago looks way better than Malik Neighbors of the Giants. I'm just saying, I'd rather have yeah. Caleb Williams throwing me the ball than Daniel Jones. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay, let's move on, man. Doesn't watch out about it, no? <laughs> Nothing now, else to on. say. Do you, know, he, do you know when you get drafted at that point? So if, you're, if your neighbours at that point, are you are you disappointed? You no. They're like, oh, I've got to play up to the cameras, I've got to smile, hug my mum and that. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. You've been to the NFL and you're yeah. getting paid. 
Exactly. And you're ha- you've had a lot of conversations with the Giants at this point as well. You'd have spoken to the Giants a lot. They'd have spoken to you about the vision, the plan, you know, all that kind of stuff. Although he did throw a little bit of shade about uh, uh, Daniel Jones in the um, in one of his press conferences. Um, what was it? He said, um, did he? he was like, oh, he's like, whoever throw- whoever's throwing me the ball or something like that. And I was like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> he didn't mm. he, he didn't say <laughs> Daniel Jones. He just sort of he just sort of brushed off like whoever ends up throwing me the ball doesn't really matter. Yeah, he didn't really handle that. It doesn't seem like he handled that especially well. But he's also like, he's got, he's, you know, he's backing himself. He's like, whoever throws him the ball, I'll catch it. It doesn't really matter to me. But, um, Fair enough. You can take it either way. Yeah, I don't think he was trying to necessarily throw shade. I saw some stuff where people were like, throws massive shade at Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is probably one of the first texts he receives, and he doesn't even, you know, show some love to his new quarterback. It's like, well, I mean, I don't think there's that much in it. Like, they'll they'll chat about yeah. stuff and they'll move on from it pretty quickly. As soon as they get into OTAs and training camp, it'll be squashed quickly because Daniel Jones needs him, needs him to be good. So I don't think yeah. there'll be anything in that. Feels a bit yeah. nothing to me. Um, but I don't think he's going to have a good first mm-hmm. season. I don't. I don't see that. I, you know, maybe six, seven hundred yards, maybe eight hundred. Mm-hmm. That'd be. I think that'd be pretty solid. If he gets four or five touchdowns mm-hmm. as well, that wouldn't be too bad. But I, I think the Giants are going to take an absolute pasting this year. You got any different thoughts, Dammy? Yeah. Good year, is it? Ten wins. <laughs> Ten. Moving on. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, cool. So at okay, seven. That's, uh... At seven, JC Latham goes seven to the Titans. So basically what what I thought was going to happen was Joe Alt would go seven, JC Latham would go nine. They just get shifted back two places because Joe Alt gets taken. Then the Titans have to take JC Latham. I like JC Latham. I think he looks like yeah. a good option out of Alabama. Um, I figured he would end up going to Chicago just because of that. But because um, Joe Alt goes to the Chargers, the Titans need an offensive, offensive lineman. JC Latham can play left tackle, right tackle. Pretty versatile. Looks like a really good pickup. So I think I think they're probably pretty happy with that. He's still nuts good. He's just not exactly who they were expecting. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you had him. You had him um, rated really highly. You had him as your um, first um, tackle off the board in your first um, mock draft. So. Yeah, I had him fourth. Yeah, yeah, ahead of Joel actually. Yeah, I did originally. I had him going fourth. I really like him, um, but all the stuff I'd read was that um, he he was dropping back just a little bit, just because not as many teams were going to take offensive tackles then, which. Actually worked out two offensive tackles, mm-hmm. and that's basically what I said was going to happen. Although I did have Tilly uh, Tilly go in ten, but we'll, we'll chat about that in a second. Yeah. But um, I think that makes sense. Jason Latham looks a good pickup, so I'm, that's why I'm saying I, I knew what the Titans were going to do. They were going to take an offensive tackle. They just do weren't able to get Joe Walt because the Chargers took him ahead of them. So they were like, "Well, J.C. Latham's awesome anyway." They'll have met with J.C. Latham anyway. Like he's if they were after an offensive tackle, mm-hmm. they'll have met with J.C. Latham, and he's nuts good and seen what he's capable of. So. It's, I think that's an easy slot into your team straight away. Left tackle, right tackle, whatever you need at the time. They need a left tackle, so he's probably going left tackle, but he can play either side. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it looks decent. Who did you guys have at seven? Joe Walt. Uh, I, I had, had Joe Walt. You both had Joe Walt. Yeah, Joe Walt. Mm. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Then it gets yeah, a little bit... I just screwed the rest of the the rest of the, the draft off the mock-up yeah. Mark. Yeah, yeah but it but it but for, but for me i'm taking a lot of these as, as positives as rough wins because i'm like well jc latham like they're still taking offensive tackle i still expect jc latham to go top 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 10 like i still think that's that's a that's a fair yeah. win um so then we get a little bit rogue and probably our biggest talking point is eight a little bit yeah <laughs> so so let, before we get into who actually went eight who did we originally have at eight? Because I had Dallas Turner edge out of Alabama. Who did you guys have? I had Roma Dunze, mm-hmm. wide receiver. Yep. I had I had Jared Verse. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I this, yeah. Oh well, uh, edge. Okay, yeah. You just had um, you flipped your yeah, edges. Yeah. Edge was I, sure. yeah, I had yeah. Um, I had Dallas Turner. You rated um, Jared Verse higher than. Um, than Dallas Turner. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Michael Penix Jr. went there, who originally on mine, I had him <laughs> going at 13 to Vegas in my original. And I didn't think he was going to go much higher than that. I didn't think anyone else really urgently needed anybody or would trade into that spot. It looked like fairly comfortable for me. There was a chance Denver might take him, I guess. But I think I thought that he was going to Vegas at 13. But he went to the Falcons, which is pretty weird for a few reasons. And it seems like it might have been a panic choice. 
because he was on the board. They didn't know what they were going to do. I think maybe they expected someone to drop. I don't know, but it didn't feel like they were prepared. Few things made this seem pretty obvious. They called Kirk Cousins at the time and said, we're taking Michael Penix Jr. So they hadn't pre-warned him. They were planning on taking the quarterback, which is pretty weird just in general that you don't tee up that you, you just paid him, right? You've just paid this guy. You're like, we want you. You're our number one guy, at least for the next few years. You know, you're not young, but you're definitely not retiring in the next three, four years. So you're the guy that's going to be in charge for the next three, four years. Maybe we'll draft someone probably in a couple of years to sit under you for the last year. We're going to have to look at quarterback options. Always. You, You need good backups. That's just, standard but you you draft someone young at that point you don't necessarily draft someone like michael Penix, who's ready to play now he's also he's 23 24 i can't remember but he's 24 he's, he's 24, 24 so he's 24. he's, he's the, in theory ready to play <laughs> now he's he's what people describe as the most ready mm-hmm. to play quarterback i think in general um that's, that's what i've heard pretty weird one of the most ready to play yeah, like he can come in and, and in theory do a job. I, I don't know mm. how good he's going to be. It's not clear. Like, but he looks fairly accurate. He can throw the long ball fairly well. Doesn't do, doesn't look like there's many holes in the game. Um, you know, mm. I don't know how good he's going to be sitting in a pocket with six six guys and in the NFL bearing down on him. Mm. But that's how you feel about every fresh quarterback coming in. But pretty rogue going yeah. to the Falcons. The thing is, there. he hasn't got the greatest injury. He hasn't even got the greatest injury record as well. He's torn his ACL twice. Uh, sorry, that's yeah. the hole in his game is the injuries. But he's 24 yeah. at that point. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> if you're 20 and you had no injuries or one injury coming out of college, like he's got four more years than most of the other quarterbacks apart from Jaden Daniels. So it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, But yeah, two ACLs is not good. Yeah. So listening to the media reaction from this, um, I was listening to one, so our, our guy Nick Wright, and he effectively said it was basically it was basically a hedge. It was, it was basically a hedge from the Falcons GM and and Raheem and Raheem Morris that effectively they so that they can never be they can never be bad. So for yeah. like the next for at least at least for the next four years, they'll either have Kirk Cousins, who's a decent quarterback. B plus, or, but he's also just coming off. He's coming off a massive injury, so if he's bad in the first few games, they have a, a quarterback who's ready to start straight out of college, who's also decent, maybe could be good. So then they w- so that, so they'll never be they'll never be bad. And and mm-hmm. the thing is, when you look at Raheem Morris, I think he's had head coaching experience before, and it didn't go well for him. Mm-hmm. So I think he's in the spot where he's like, this time I've got to make it work. Mm-hmm. Because, like, hate to bring it up, but as a black head coach, you don't get too many opportunities to be a head coach, man. Right. So, like, yeah. he can't waste this opportunity. So he's like, okay, if 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 I just get nine and eight record every every season, they can't really fire me because nine and eight record probably wins the division most of the time. Yeah, but you've <laughs> made that, such a bold end. decision. He's made such a bold decision, and if it goes if it goes against him, then that's just another an easy way to get rid of him. Because they yeah, cause, but... because they bought into the they bought into the win now uh, mentality or regime where you bring in um, a veteran, I say veteran quarterback who is ready to win now, mm-hmm. and the whole plan was to give him the weapons or give him the team that can allow them to compete now, and then you mm-hmm. then your first draft at eight is a quarterback, yeah, an old quarterback. Okay, you you say you say that win now mentality. Kirk Cousins has one playoff win. He he's he's not exactly a winning it the most winningest quarterback ever. Like he's fine. He's fine. He'll get you nine, ten wins a season. That thirteen win season he had at the Vikings, that was more of an aberration than anything else. That's that's not a normal Kirk Cousins year. So like it's it's like I get what you're saying. It was really weird like they do in it, but I think they've done it so that they can never be bad rather than, oh, let's win this season or let's win in two years. I think it's just so that they can't be bad. Interesting approach. So, okay, so here's, here's my take. So I uh, I understand that uh, they've clearly made that choice fairly last minute and have gone, okay, we won't be terrible if we take a good backup quarterback. I mean, there's absolutely no guarantee Michael Penix is going to be that good. 
He's also had a couple injuries, like mm-hmm. you say. So it feels weird. It didn't feel right at all at the time when they did it. As I say, I did not watch it, though, at the exact time. But when I saw it in the morning, it did feel a bit weird. I, <laughs> My take was it could be really a genius play from them, but only because you're banking on Kirk Cousins not being good, which is not what they've paid for. They've paid $45 million a year for Kirk Cousins, assuming he's going to be good. <laughs> so if you were assuming Kirk Cousins was going to be pretty rough after the Achilles, which is what I expect. I expect he's not going to be good. I expect he's going to, it's going to be a really rough start, and I think there's going to be calls for him to be benched. That's okay. what I expect to happen, and Michael Penix will probably be playing by game eight. But that can't be what you're expecting expecting or intending because why would you have paid him 45 million a year which is every, every sign here points to panic maybe they got some news about Kirk Cousins about maybe his injury and maybe they've not been forthright about that I don't know but maybe they got some other information that hasn't been made clear but they're saying in the media right now everything is saying Kirk Cousins is a starter they're being really clear about that I know Kirk Cousins is the guy Kirk Cousins is the guy so they're backing him obviously they're going to because that would be psychotic not to but Penix is going to be pissed like Penix will not be happy with mm. this. He wants to come in and play and earn his contract because you don't not get that. long. You don't get long as a quarterback to come in and 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 move to make you make your move to get a contract. Like if you're young and you sit for a year and a half, mm. you're probably not especially happy. But if the if the GM tees that up with you, no, you're going to sit for one or two years. Trust us. This is the process. Like we've done this before, or this is our approach. Look what happened in Kansas City. We see you as a potential Mahomes. Like this is what we want for you. Like you you can kind of mm. buy someone into that quite quickly. They're not getting any less money, and they'll get their chance after one or two years. Like. Some players might still be annoyed, but at least you'll know about that. I don't know what they've said to Michael Penix here. Oh, you're going to sit for four years and that's the end of your contract and cool. Like, what do you deliver? What message do you deliver? There? Like, what message are you delivering there? I don't know what message. I don't know what message you're even happy with if you're Michael Penix. Like, maybe he gets injured. Is that a great message? That's not a message I'd want to receive. Or maybe this guy gets injured and isn't good from his Achilles. Oh, you just took 45 million a year off our pay, off our cap. You could have put a wide receiver on that if you were going to take me. Like, what? You could have put three wide receivers on that if you were going to take me. Like, what are you doing? Give me some offensive linemen. Give me something. Not potentially 36-year-old Kirk Cousins who's riding the bench when I'm playing. It's weird. Very weird. Uh, let's say I think it has the potential okay, to be a good pick, like uh, but only from a hedging perspective. As you say, only from a we think he's potentially not going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we need someone to back him up. But again, yeah. that just makes no sense yeah. for you, the way you've approached it. Uh, yeah. I think it'll turn well, out well, good, well, but it shouldn't. But like maybe, but like maybe, like you said, that they've probably, maybe they've had some news about um, Kirk Cousins' injury. Maybe that like maybe they've gone. Oh, he's he could he could be quite limited. We we need Maybe. we need to get a backup here, but I but mean, you would, they had but Taylor you must, Heineke in the building. So but like, you must but you must have known that when he absolutely destroyed his Achilles, you were like, "Ha! Huh, this guy probably won't be as good as he was." Nah, hundred eighty million. Like I don't yeah. really understand. <laughs> like that we thought. I thought it was a weird take at the time. I wasn't happy with the move at the time for the Falcons. I was like, this is a mistake. Like. Coming back from Achilles is brutal. Mm. I expect Aaron Rodgers is going to be rubbish this year, and I expect that Kirk Cousins will be better than Rodgers, but not and not anywhere near as good as he was. And I think this will be roughly the end of his career. I don't think he plays the full four years in Atlanta. I think he's gone after at least how many years? He's got? Two max. Two. Two. But he's two years guaranteed. His contract's two years guaranteed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think you, I think they'll they'll keep him for the two because they have to. I think they might well get rid of him after two because it's going nowhere and they'll want to play Michael Penix. I just that's what I expect to probably by happen. the by the second year they'd already be by the second year they'd already be have um Penix as a starter. I think so. Yeah. I think in year two he plays. Mm-hmm. I think in year one he might get some games. Yeah. In all honesty, because if they're not, let's say after. Eight games, they're three and five. What's the Falcons' position on that? Do the fans go, give me some Michael Penix, give him some game time? Happens every year whenever there's a quarterback riding the bench. Like the Justin Fields stuff, people were calling out for Justin Fields for a while, like a couple of years ago. Like Mm -hmm. I just, I don't 
think unless Kirk Cousins lights it up, like he had a great first five games in Minnesota last year, really good last first five games. Like we were like, damn, yeah. like Kirk Cousins can play. I like, always thought he was a B plus quarterback. Never thought he was a bad quarterback. Definitely can play and is good. But I think going in after the Achilles, eight games in, if they've got two, three wins, I think I think after eight games, teams teams might might make a decision and move on. But it might be quite early. They might give Cousins a bit more more time to play into it. Um, but brand new team, all that stuff, it's a tough one. Anything else you want to add on that? Because mm. I've just gone on my rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I can't. I can't disagree with what you said. Yeah. I, again, I, I, I agree with Nick. Right. I think it's a hedge, but like you Looks said, it. it does. It's. It doesn't make sense. No, could be it a good hedge though. Just summarize. Just, summar- right. just, just yeah. to summarize my take, could be a good hedge. That's what I'm saying. Could be a good hedge. Um, all right, cool. So on to pick nine, um, Roma Dunze to Chicago. Who did I have? Oh, I had JC Latham at this point going nine to Chicago because I thought they were an offensive tackle. Um, what did you guys have? I had um, Dallas Turner, who mm-hmm. dropped, <laughs> dropped significantly. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I thought I thought they'd take an edge. I didn't. Th- um, I didn't think I didn't say would drop this far, but it makes sense. Where did, how he did. Where did you have Adunze going selectively. originally? Um, to the Falcons. Mm, hey, right, got you. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, think I had Adunze at nine as well. I think you had Adunze at nine. Did you? Fair enough. I don't yeah, remember I what you so. said, to be honest. I can't remember them. We can bring them up at the. We'll, mm-hmm. They'll probably be on your screen now. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought JC Latham might have dropped or stayed at this point as the second offensive tackle, which is why I thought it made sense. And they, they could do with a couple offensive tackles. The offensive line doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad at all. So yeah. maybe they just felt they needed need another mm-hmm. weapon. And Robert and Zay does look really good. So maybe they felt, like they clearly felt, actually, we need another weapon. And Robert and Zay's dropped. So. We'll take him. They might have expected them. They might have expected Remedens to go to the Falcons, so they might have changed up what they were doing yeah. at that point. So yeah. fair game. Oh, actually, yeah, I had I had I had, um, I had the Chargers trading back up because I had the Chargers trading down um, from from five. I had mm. the Chargers trading back up to eight with the Falcons and getting Roma Dunze. <laughs> oh wow! You were out of your you mind. You were doing the most. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crazy things happen. Damn, you yeah. had Jared Verse. <laughs> oh, I had Jared Verse at nine. You had Jared Verse. You yeah. had Jared Verse at eight. Okay, and, and who did I have at nine? You had Michael Penix Jr., but the Broncos trading up for him. Oh, Yo. yeah, the Broncos trading up at nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my lord! Yeah, yeah. Brazen. Yeah. Are you talking about my trade? <laughs> no, no, no. Which one's more brazen? One team trading up or a team trading down and then trading back up again? Draft day, innit? <laughs> <laughs> there is no way that this guy just and no, he just used draft day in that in that statement. Just draft day in it and then move on. Like what? What are you saying right now? You are out of your mind, man. You are out of your mind. Draft day. You're, you're, out, you're out of your mind. Uh, All right, cool. All right, let's let's wrap it up with oh, 10. Um, so originally we all had JJ McCarthy um, go into the Vikings, but we had him trading. We had the Vikings trading into five to take him earlier. I guess the Vikings assumed yeah. or realized that no one was going to take him early, earlier than five, earlier than 10. So they didn't need to trade up any higher. That can only be my assumption that... If he went earlier, that is what it is. I don't think they were willing to trade in. It looks like they weren't willing to trade into five. They probably didn't have the resource for it or willing to pay as much mm. as uh, the Chargers wanted. The Chargers probably wanted a lot for that pick. So I imagine they probably were like, well, now we'll just wait yeah. and see what happens. I think they wanted JJ McCarthy, but I think they were just waiting to see what happened. I imagine they lost it when Michael Penix went at eight. They were probably baffled by that move. But yeah. um as most people were. Mm-hmm. But I think after that happens, you're like, oh, well, JJ McCarthy's definitely coming to us because Chicago definitely weren't taking a quarterback at that point. So uh, no one else really needed one. Like after the front three went, Arizona, Chargers, Giants, Titans, and Falcons, in theory, in their mind, weren't taking one. And neither were. And then Chicago again at nine. So I guess they were like, no one else has taken one. 
imagine if the Falcons had taken him though, would have been insane pandemonium. But they clearly like <laughs> Michael Penix. Would have been amazing, wouldn't it? Because mm. what would the Vikings have done? Mm. Um, Question: Why did why did the Vikings and the Jets sw- base effect, effectively swap picks? Because yeah, exactly because the, the, Bronco, the, the, Broncos, the Broncos GM was was making a lot of noise that he was going to trade up to trade up ahead. Mm, he, okay. He's basically just playing the game. Yeah. He's even stayed said it in press conferences. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought <laughs> it was that the yeah, I thought it was that the they thought the Jets might take somebody, um, only because and I imagine they probably immediately outright said they weren't going to because they didn't want to piss off Aaron Rodgers the same way Green Bay did with Jordan Love. So I'm mad. So actually, having thought about mm. it, that probably didn't really make sense because they were just pissed off Aaron Rodgers and they've done everything Aaron Rodgers wanted. So I assume. That, that sort of made sense. But yeah, as you say, it looks like Denver sort of played the game a little bit and forced the Vikings' hand a bit to make that move. doesn't look like they had to give up a huge amount, but more than they would have wanted for sure. But they clearly wanted J.J. McCarthy. So at that point, if people are making noise, you you got gamed a little bit by Denver. Is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. But um, mm. we have J.J. McCarthy going to the Vikings. Okay. We, just had it, we just had it a bit higher up. So... Um, I'm going to count most of that as, as as a bit of a win. So what did we have? So in the top 10, the only ones who I had in my top 10 who didn't go in the top 10 were Dallas Turner and um, Talisi Fuaga. Everyone, every other pick I had was, was in the uh, top 10. Yeah, mine, Dallas Turner and Fashionu, because I had Fashionu at 10. Mm-hmm. You had Fuaga at 10, Ben. And yeah. Dami, you had JC Latham at 10. So yeah, for Danny, and then Jared Burst at eight. Jared Burst, yeah. yeah. Interesting, yeah. You're the only one. Yeah, you got the you got nine out of ten. In terms Dammy. of who was in the top ten. Well, Dammy did. In terms of who was in the top ten. Fair enough. The only Fair one enough, Dammy. Wasn't wasn't was Jared Burst. Nice. Yeah. Good job. That's a good job. Right, I got, I got the title right in the right in the right place though. I got the yeah, was... most right in the right place. All I'm saying is oh, they took sorry. teams took players in the wrong place, so I should be the GM of the Chargers. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's all I have to say. That's all, all right. I'm saying. Be better. Uh, that's all I'm saying. You've used your pick poorly. That's what I'm saying. And the Chargers are going to suck, and then I'm going to blame you, bits. Oh, God. <laughs> what? I didn't pick uh, what? <laughs> we didn't even take the you're pick. Just like the co- said. You're just the closest here, man. <laughs> So, guys, so outside of the top 10, are there any, like, noticeable uh, notable picks that, that you guys saw that you were like, oh, that's an interesting pick, or, oh, they should have done that? Well, less on the, less on the specific picks, but just the interesting fact that the, the 14 consecutive offensive players, which meant that players that we had in our top 10, like Dallas Turner and Jared Verse, dropped down to, <laughs> to like, the, the mid-late teens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah um, Dallas Turner went 17 and to the Vikings, and Jared Verse went 19th to the the um, Rams. Mm. Yeah. I find yeah. that interesting, you know, because I think when when you look at the best teams from last year, the best teams from last year, where where they were the best at was was on defense and especially their linebackers. So you had Patrick Green, Roquan Smith, Fred Warner. And then you had the and you had the three players at Kansas City, so Willie Gay, um, I think it was uh, Sneed and 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 Drew Tranquil. It's like, oh sorry, Nick Bolton, Nick Bolton, sorry, instead of uh, Sneed. Like linebackers are so important now in the game because they, and it does and it doesn't seem that any teams took linebackers quite early on. Now maybe I don't know. Maybe the maybe the class of linebackers this year wasn't great, but I would have I would have thought that teams are trying to upgrade at linebacker because that's almost where most of the games were won and lost last year. But it just didn't seem mm. that way for some reason. Mm. First linebacker was taken in the second round at forty five. Yeah, Adrian Cooper to the, it wasn't uh, a to the it wasn't a strong linebacker class. There wasn't wasn't a huge yeah, amount okay. going on at linebacker Fair this enough. this year. But I think um the Vikings, Dallas Turner at seventeen, that looks a shrewd pick for me. I think, like, if he's dropped that far, that is a pure value pick. Looks good. Like, I, I, I don't mm. see a problem with that at all. Like, seventeen, that's value right there. Mm. Uh, what else? Oh, we yeah. had um, Xavier Worthy being traded um, 
like the uh, the Chiefs trading with um, the Bills, hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Love that so much. They need to the stop Bills, trading they don't know with their lesson. the Chiefs, man. They don't learn their lesson. They do not. Oh, they need to stop doing that. They do not. But they've <laughs> they accepted. Uh, like As we said, I, I, I saw some of Nick Wright's stuff as well. They have accepted that they are not competing with the Chiefs anymore. Like, they've fully accepted that. <laughs> and they should have because they are never anywhere near as good. But... They have fully accepted it now. Although, if they hadn't, they wouldn't make that trade. But they've clearly accepted they're not competing with the Chiefs for anything anymore. And they're, they're like, yeah, yeah, this is a value one for us. We're clearly not seeing what you're seeing. And Xavier Worthy is fast, fast. Like the record for speed in the draw in the uh, combine. Guy is quick, quick. And they need some break the top of the um, of the defense speed, and they got it because he's quick. Mm-hmm. We just give him Mahomes, just another ridiculous <laughs> weapon. And I, I, and I mean, I, I know um, what's his face is um, going to be banned for half the <laughs> half the season, likely. Mm-hmm. Um, but just yep. yeah, is what it is, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of. <laughs> I'm tired of Mahomes. I'm tired of the Chiefs. <laughs> They're going to be good again, yeah. man. It's hard well, to the stop thing, them. The thing is, in so it, in the bill in the Bills defense they had to let a lot of players go because of the cap this year. Yeah. So like they actually they, they they were actually short on their roster, so they needed the picks. So yeah. I just wish like just I just kinda wish they hadn't had done it with the Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> but another team but another team to trade with. Not the Chiefs yeah. you whoop your ass every year. But Chiefs clearly it wanted it. Man. Chiefs clearly wanted it. The other thing I'll add here is our boy, our boy Jalen Polk, who we spoke about earlier, was uh, went thirty seventh to the Patriots. So imagine he's unreal. Imagine, imagine he's absolutely nuts, and him and Drake May turn up turn out to be unbelievably good. The thing is, I don't even see a problem with taking Jalen Polk there. My only issue is it's for the Patriots who cannot draft, so it just feels really weird for me. I'm like, this guy can actually be good. But will he actually be good as a result? Like, there are better landing spots for him, for sure. But we'll see. We'll see. But um, Patriots needed weapons, so I don't. I don't hate Jalen Polk going there. But it's. Uh, <laughs> I did not. I didn't. I didn't look into him too much beforehand. But they definitely need weapons. And uh, honorable mention for Kool Aid McKinstry dropping into the second round. We had a. We had a feeling he might go in the first, but he dropped early second round, forty first to the Saints. So we're going to see uh, Kool Aid McKinstry playing next year. One of our favorite um, named players going out there. Yeah, I'm just trying to see where some of the other ones went. I don't even, I'm not even going to try and say, oh, his name Xuvier or whatever his face is. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't even know if he got Oh, drafted. yeah. What did you say? Drafted. Yeah, what did you say his name was when we spoke about it? Did you use the food? You couldn't say that guy's yeah, name yeah. at all. Yeah, don't do that again. Don't do that. Hilarious. Don't do that. That's rough. That's rough. Oh, I'm just having a look for him. I, yeah, I don't think he. Oh, hilarious! Did the Dolphins had a forfeited um, pick in the third round? Yeah, in the third round. Cornwall was four though. Cornwall was four. Oh, they got pun- punished for violating um, the anti-tampering policy in conversation wow. with Tom Brady. I don't know what. <laughs> uh... No, I don't think Zuzufu got. Drafted. <laughs> Luke well, there McCaffrey. was. Well, there Luke was. McCaffrey got drafted. Uh, a hundredth by um, the Commanders. Nice. Wow. Well, there was. Well, there was chatter was originally about does. about. There was chatter him. originally about Tom Brady going to the Dolphins, wasn't there? And there was a whole thing about how the Dolphins um, started having conversations when they shouldn't have, and some stuff around that. So maybe that's it's probably that. I guess. All right. Cool. Anything else? Happy with the draft? Some interesting stuff. Yeah. Dammy can't be happy. Yeah, I'm um, some young. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, but there was there were some British guys who were well British and Irish players who were who were drafted or were uh, were picked up as uh, unrestricted free agents as well, which was nice to see. Um, I think some of the kickers got drafted towards the later rounds, and there was actually a English a former English rugby player who got drafted at two hundred and twenty first in the draft. Uh, yeah, a guy called yeah. Travis. Travis Clayton to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, Travis Clayton. Yeah. So yeah. It is funny to read it yeah, out good, when good it's like to him. I hope it's, it falls out. It's funny when you read it out. It's like from Carolina via Tennessee and Kansas City. So there were some trades there. English rugby union player drafted from Basingstoke. <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> normally, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, drafted from Basic Stoke. Normally, it's like drafted out of the Big Ten, Penn State, and it's like drafted out of Basic Stoke. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Oh. He's a he's six foot seven. Yeah, yeah six foot seven, deep. and he runs a four point seven nine. <sighs> That's quick. Have you got that, Ben? No, I told you I don't. I've been very honest <laughs> about my seven point four nine. I'm very honest about my lack of speed. But you lot thinking you're breaching five, I think, is a bit rogue. We still need to do it. My yeah, we should. Playing up at the moment. Oh, of course it is. Right You're going to start limping about, are you? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, the one's, yeah, the one's there. You've been jockeying for position again, like oh, you did when you snapped your ACL. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, cool. That's, um, that's it. Anything else? It was a cool draft. It was a cool draft. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was a cool draft. Yeah. Um, we'll get into um, predictions, expectations from the season. I think, yeah, I think we need to, yeah, yeah, predictions. And I want to see what we, what our guesses are for defensive rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year, Ooh, our, yeah. um, coming out of this draft. That'll be interesting. I like that. I like that one. So should we do? Um, so, should, so next week, should we'll we do? do um, or in a couple of weeks' time, we'll do um, like expectations for the season. Way too early predictions on some of that stuff. We can do some way too early stuff if we like. It's going to be rogue, but screw it. We'll go for it, and then we'll, we'll do some more accurate stuff, hopefully, closer to the season starting in September. Okay. All right, cool. If that's it, then, I guess uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch right. you in the next one.